The pad that we're going to look at is a pad which enhances or mimics the fibre of fatty padding over the heel. Where there's been some um, damage to the fat pad or there's fat pad atrophy or the fat pad has been affected, its mechanical characteristics has been affected by pathology um, such as type 2 diabetes or um, rheumatoid arthritis which is particularly um, uh, damaging to the heel fat pad or fat pads in general, also of the metatarsal heads where, where the, the, um, the fatty acid composition within the fat pad is affected by the pathology. This type of pad tries to give back some of the original mechanical characteristics that are found within the fat pad and therefore um, comfort back to our patients. So we're going to use some um, Hapla Swan Foam which is a perfectly elastic foam. I press in and there's instant rebound so there's elasticity there. This is five millimeters thick, has a hypoallergenic backing and is able to give cushioning to impact um, at heel strike uh, during gait. We could also use Hapler's Foma Felt which is a mix of foam and felt um, and that is designed to mimic the micro macro chamber uh, arrangement within the heel fat pad um, but for padding purposes today we'll use um, Hapler Swan Foam. So using um, this pad what we're going to do then is measure how much we need and st stick it onto the heel area here. So let's cut out a portion that we require. On the heel, this particular pad should cover both the primarily fatty area of the fat pad, but advance anteriorly. Um, there's a wonderful paper, um, 2011, uh, Journal of Anatomy, um, by an Italian physiologist, uh, Dr. Campanelli, that gives um, computer tomography scans of the fat pad and shows its full extent. And so mimicking that, really, if we look at a, a bony model here, um, We've got the, the calcaneus portion here, but also over the cuboid and navicular, still fat pad um, with a sagittal ridge, um, which uh, theory um, has given some explanations, but it's still not fully known what that sagittal ridge in a fat pad does. But we're going to cover all this area here um, with our pad to try and mimic the mechanical characteristics of a damaged fat pad. So first of all then, um, to follow the contouring of the proximal portion of the heel, we're going to cut a semicircular area, like so. Then we're going to define the lateral and medial borders of our pad. This is slightly larger, so let's reduce that down. Now that's about the right size. You'll notice slightly wider than the foot, but we are going to bevel the edges and they're going to hug round the skin to help adhesion and, and give comfort to the pad. So it's just a fraction wider than the actual dimensions, the width of the foot there. Let's, if we put here, this advance is quite far forward. But as I said earlier, um, that fat pad does advance here. In fact, the fat pad actually advances to just proximal to the Met heads. So we're going to cover quite a large portion there to give that fat pad experience back to our patient. Let's bevel off the edges. Now when you're using elastic foam, it's good to take long cuts. That way then, where you have to take the next cut, you don't get that little ridge. So as long, long cuts as you possibly can. Okay, so there's our first long cut and there's our second. Trying to make that a seamless bevel along the edge. Okay, let's continue that bevel all the way around the pad, taking those long cuts. Okay, we bevel around the edge here. There are a couple of tiny little ridges which, uh, where I took the, uh, the next cut, but they shouldn't transfer through to the patient, so they should feel okay. Right, let's adhese this to the skin and then we'll place on the retentive strapping. So peel away the paper back. Lifting the foot slightly, placing this gently in the right area, so that, and then just gently curving it round. Now, to help adhesion and to help the pad stay on um, for the days that you'd like it to stay on for, we're going to put some retentive strapping around this, 
The rear, we're going to use five centimeter Hapler band, Cox and Gerard Hapler band, which is an elastic tape or a tape with elastic fibers woven into the material. And we're going to place a portion around the uh, back of the foot there, just over the heel, and then we're going to, so around the back of the foot, and then we're going to overlap as we come round. Okay, so let's cut out what we need first. Remove the corners so the hosiery doesn't grab onto the tape. And pull it off. Okay, let's just remove those. Let's peel off the paper back if we just place this. As you can see, the Hapler band has a light stretch in it, so I'm just asking you to raise your foot slightly, thank you. And we place this just at the back here and just gently lay it down onto the skin and over the pad itself. So now you'll note there's just there, this is the part where we're going to try and lay it down with a minimal creasing and at this point here you can place a little cut or you can just smooth it in as this is over the pad it won't be felt by the patient. Now let's lay down the rest of the overlapping pieces. Again, just raise that slightly. Just lay down on the base and with a very light stretch, pull up. Why are we putting that light compression through the tape? We're doing that because as the heel fat pad expands, if there's atrophy, it may expand too much. It may not be that structured in its expansion. So we are putting a little bit of an elastic constraint around its expansion, only lightly, to try and return some of its mechanical properties to it. Okay, so we overlap it roughly 50%, and then put a little bit of a lift as we stick it down to the foot. And then the final piece, overlapping both tape and skin, lay it down, put a little bit of a lift and stretch. And there we have our heel fat pad replacement pad made with the hapless swan foam to return some of the mechanical characteristics to the heel and the fat pad cushioning the calcaneus as you take steps.